I'll give you an example there of something I thought, and that's spot on what you said about an emotional experience. I just thought about something very psychopathic there the other day that I hadn't noticed before, but it's pretty obvious now. It's one of these things that pops into your head. It says, oh, you know, it's so obvious. I can always remember uh, watching these, like, born-again Christian types, these, like, holy roller, Bible-thumping, Pentecostal Christian types, and they'd be always talking about, you know, we must include the, the, we must include the Christian dogma or we must include biblical uh, ideas enshrined within legal, statutory, governmental framework. We can't have a separation of church and state. And they would always follow this by saying, if we take the Bible out of society or, or we take it out of the schools, how will people then learn morality and empathy? And that is such a revealing statement because it, what these people are basically telling me right there and then is that they're psychopaths and they have no inherent <laughs> notion of morality and empathy and they literally do need a rule book and then they project that psychopathic uh, aspect of themselves onto the rest of society by saying we must have a Christian society it's and I, that's the it's oh, it's amazing, isn't it? But that's what you're dealing with. It's so amazing that you mentioned this because this is the intention uh, that I really wanted to talk to you. It's that um, I was watching a new documentary about the witch's hammer. Um, you know, the Malleus Maleficarum. Um, that was uh, basically the handbook in um, uh, in, in finding uh, witches and uh, convicting them, right? The, the point was that the behavior of writing that book is exactly what you just touched upon. That was exactly what he did. He, he wrote these moral guidelines to uh, loot out or uh, to, uh, to root out some sort of um, wrong moral uh, behavior. But he himself did not have a moral core exactly so and 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 what really struck me was what you told me uh when we talked last about um how indigenous people what what i will call natural people or the pagans they would find them themselves and they would deal with them themselves and w then what happens to a society that gets um uh, kind of uh, raped by a new culture so they are not uh, able to use their traditional what I will call medicine or methods of finding these things so what Christianity really did right to the pagan society was that they took out the the natural behavior of people So they did not. They, they didn't have a, an immune system anymore. They didn't have any defenses. It's like it's like what happens in uh, um, in, in in national parks if you if you don't have an apex predator. The other predators will start killing everything. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. so weird because I was then watching. Um, two other uh, documentaries, one about um, the wolf in Yellowstone Park and another one about the predators of the sea and the whole term predation is so important right now it's so important that we understand what it is and that it actually might explain what went wrong in human society mm. because we let the predators loose Mm. That's what happened. That's that's the secret. That's you know you have all this stuff among the sort of new age heads and the conspiracy theories of w w when did humanity go wrong? Did an asteroid hit the Earth so many millions of years ago? Was there a great flood? Did Atlantis sink at the bottom of the sea? Did aliens come and and change our DNA? And uh, I think the answer is what happened was somewhere along the line the psychopaths became feral. Yeah, but, but, but what must have happened was that he somehow, his nature, um, he, he, he must have had some sort of opportunity that was not there before. And I think it, it, it must have started with um, urbanization. 
Yeah, well, in agriculture, the, the English Enclosure Act in the 12th century, it's a very interesting turning point in world history. Uh, what happened was that they, this is where all the green patchwork fields in this part of the world come from. They come from the English Enclosure Act. I think it was Richard II was the king at the time. But basically it was, uh, you had a very different kind of uh, sort of rural society in England. You have like a uh, sort of casual farming, oh a nice meadow there, we'll plant some wheat and uh, there's some woods there, we'll, we'll collect the blackberries from there, we'll kill the odd, odd boar, we'll trap a few bunny rabbits and squirrels, there's a stream down there, we can throw up some fish cages, catch a few salmon. And it was very, very, uh, it was a very sort of almost like free form, improvised form of agriculture. Uh, the standards of living, were, the standards of the health of the people shown through their dental records of, cor of bodies found was very high. Then somebody came up with the idea of the Enclosure Act, which is what they basically did was they decided to split up the, the countryside into what they called manageable sort of hedgerow covered fields where uh, the, the peasantry which is basically would just basically would exist to toil in the fields and then from that they would get a subsistence living from the actual overall agricultural yield of the fields and then this this was this coincided with laws against poaching they couldn't trap rabbits they couldn't hunt deer uh, in some parts some some lords wouldn't even let them collect black blackberries and and think and and, I think, and you know what I think like that's that. the key I think that's the key yeah. you you, so, you are so much on 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 the the right core of the problem because when I look back uh, what I know about history I think it's in what you what you touched upon with its law. It is the written law because when I when I look at um, behavior in an animal uh, in the animal kingdom, right, uh, in a wolf pack, what you usually have is you have a hierarchy, and then um, you have your alpha, which is the strongest, and you can there would be a lot of things pointing to the fact that the alpha is kind of like the psychopath to some extent. And what usually happens is that you have a... However, the alpha will defend the tribe as a whole. Yes, of like course. Pack. Yes, of course. So that's different. But That's a fundamental difference there. But but I think a, a psychopath that comes to power will at, at least enact that anyways. Uh, let, let, me, let me get to the point. Um, there's, always, there's always a beta, which is the defender of the alpha. But it is also the defender or the peacekeeper because it also keeps the alpha from dominating and stressing the rest of the group. This is a well-known fact that, that most people that know about wolves will tell you. The, the beta will always be the peacemaker, right? And if we take that image and put it on human society, if human society could have, uh, might have worked like that in pagan days, right? That there would be a leader and a peacekeeper, a chieftain and a witch doctor or shaman right yeah. the shaman would be the the sort of the the philosophical guardian yes and this is also tribe. it's also As mentioned in um, in in classical greek philosophy because they are trying to rebuild after the whole warring tribal uh, state but what happens is that written law comes into in, into being I think it's the written law because if you have a written law, if you have written uh, shamanistic traditions, right, then that kind of takes the place of the natural peacekeeper. You can take him out. He doesn't have to be a good peacekeeper because you're peacekeeping with a law.